Hey guys, it's Jane from Legend Gaming. In this video, I want to talk about sniping between Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 4. Bad time to look over a bunch of gameplay from various YouTubers and the Battlefield website. And I've just gathered all the information they could on sniping. I've also talked to some various people about sniping as well. And I just sort of want to talk about the differences between Battlefield 4 and Battlefield 1 at this stage in the game's sort of pre alpha, alpha stage. So, start off. As far as Battlefield 1 goes, snipers are no longer the standard one-hit kill in close quarters. Uh, for those of you who don't know Battlefield 4, the majority of the snipers were, were like 100 damage up close. There were a few that were 80, but no one really used them because they didn't have that one-hit kill up close. But in this game, the sniper damage model is just really different. So snipers have specific engagement ranges where they can one-hit kill. This means that maybe you can get a one-hit kill between 20 meters and 30 meters, but you can't get a one-hit kill any closer or any further. Uh, this example is shown with the Gewer 98 rifle, and the majority of you have probably seen how this isn't a one-hit kill in close quarters. But if you look at the gameplay right here, this guy would hit a long-range shot, and it gave him enemy hit 100. This is from the Battlefield stream, but I also watched a level cap video, and he got a long range hit, and it said enemy hit 100, which means that you did all 100 damage, and he didn't get the headshot bonus at long range. So this really means that snipers' rifles will feel different depending on each sniper rifle, because they all won't have the standard 12.5 meter one hit kill range. You'll have to learn the engagement ranges that snipers work, and you'll have to sort of tailor your play style towards that. It's sort of just I find it interesting because in Battlefield Hardline I think they took it a step further than Battlefield 4 by burying up sniper rifles. They didn't have too many sniper rifles, but each one seemed to fill a specific role. The Scout Elite being the longer range sniper rifle with the fast fire rate, the AWM and R700 being medium range, and the Knockout being a close quarter sniper. And I really hope Battlefield 1 is able to fill that role because I feel that Battlefield 4 all the snipers felt too similar. I mean they, there were like 12 or 15 sniper rifles but there were only like three or four that stood out as different to me and only three or four that I really wanted to use. Anyway the bayonet charges however also enable the snipers to be more versatile in close quarters so for those of you who don't know you can sprint at an enemy with a bayonet charge and actually sort of stab him with that and get a one hit kill which is an interesting new melee mechanic that contributes to the game and I feel like the knifing in this game is much better than Battlefield 4 where we had the weird knife animations and counter knifing. I feel like there are still some good animations in this game with knifing however they're not weird and on honestly frustrating like counter knifing was in Battlefield 4. In this game they've also said that there's a faster bul bullet velocity so the bullets travel overall at a faster speed so you have to lead your targets a bit less however it's not like it's instant you still have to lead your targets a little bit but the bullet velocity is faster and I think that's because they're trying to counter the general stigma that World War One was a slow and drawn out war and just give the people who are playing the game an idea that these weapons were powerful and fast and yeah, just ultimately felt great. A zeroing is also at zero meters. Thank you so much for this. So this basically means for those of you who didn't play Battlefield 4 or were just hardline, in Battlefield 4 they made the zeroing for snipers at 100 meters. So this means that if you're in close quarters and you aim at a guy's head, the bullet would fly over his head because the bullet's aiming for 100 meters. This was just so stupid and it meant that at medium range you might have to aim at, like at the guy's neck in order to hit him in the head, which is just flat out stupid and I really hope that they keep this mechanic in to make sure it's zero meters because it's just logical, right? Why would they zero it to 100 meters? I understand giving an option to zero it to 100 meters, but making that the default and not even be able to zero it to zero meters was just flat out stupid. In addition to this, the Scout class doesn't get any enhanced pistols. This isn't really something that Battlefield 4 got, but Battlefield Hardline gave the professional class, or the sniper class, the best pistols in the game. And it seems like the Scout just has standard M1911, and they don't obviously get automatic pistols, because I'm pretty sure they weren't. They didn't exist back in World War 1, but I wonder if the pistols will just do more damage, maybe, instead of having um, a faster fire rate. However, this may change because obviously it's a pre-alpha stage and there aren't a ton of weapons and currently there's only three snipers right now the Guru 98 the SMLE Mark 3 and the Russian 1895 and out of those there it doesn't seem to be too much variety but they are pretty interesting and in the live stream there was only Guru 98 gameplay but I've seen gameplay with the SMLE Mark 3 but I haven't seen any with the Russian 1895 yet which is kind of interesting 
Scopes are also rendered differently, and they seem more realistic. Um, I'm assuming you guys have seen how the scopes look in Battlefield 1. There's something that looks a bit different about them, and that's just when you zoom in, the surroundings outside actually blur, but they don't go completely away. So you can still see stuff outside your scope, and it gives you a slightly wider field of view because you can see stuff a little bit to your left and a little bit to your right outside of the scope itself, whereas in Battlefield 4, when you zoomed into the scope, it was just completely closed off in black other than the crosshair which I think this is a cool and interesting mechanic, and I think it actually works better and looks nicer um, by a mile. It, it just looks absolutely awesome in this game. In addition to this, Marksman's bonus is back, and the addition of counter sniping bonus has been introduced to give snipers a more fulfilled role. So basically what this is, is that Marksman's bonus is back, so when you get a headshot at 150 meters, you'll get a bonus 150 points. And in addition to this, if you're sniping against an enemy sniper or you take down an enemy sniper, whether it's with your bayonet or something, you get a bonus 25 points for counter sniping, which really tells snipers that they are aiming to take out the enemy snipers, to take out those guys who may be picking off their teammates because they have a more fulfilled long range role, which is really awesome. And Another thing about long range rolls is the Guru 98 seem to have a really long one hit kill range. It seems to do 80 damage up close, but the range where you can get the one hit kill seems to be like 100 meters, which is also really interesting and awesome. A new bipod mechanic has been implemented into snipers, so this isn't like the bipod mechanic in Battlefield 4, it works a lot better and it's also on LMGs, so whenever you look over a ledge it'll automatically deploy your bipod and you won't have to like move or jerk off your bipod like you did in Battlefield 4. Uh, this will actually just automatically take it off when you move, and while, but while you're on the ledge you actually get st stable aim and same when you're lying down you get stable aim and if you want stable aim while you're just running around you can just hold your breath like you could in Battlefield 4. However this gives an extended period of basically stable aim that we didn't really get in Battlefield 4 with the snipers. I mean the bipods did work however I, no one really used it unless you're sniping extreme long ranges because it just took so long to get up and move your bipod around it just wasn't a practical way to actually use them. As far as sniper variety goes, in Battlefield 4 we had 15 snipers and I think at the end of Battlefield Hardline now we have like 6 or 7 bolt action rifles. I think that Battlefield 1 should shoot for 6 or 7 bolt action rifles because I feel like it's a bit unrealistic to try to get that many into World War 1, a uh, World War 1 shooter that would be have a ton of variety. I feel like they could squeeze them in but I feel like there would be a lot of repetition whereas like I said Battlefield Hardline had a lot more defined sniper roles and I really hope that Battlefield 1 can replicate that. While I feel like in Battlefield 4 they had a ton of sniper groups that had defined roles like the M98B, SRR, and Gold Magnum when it first came out were good at long range and maybe the McMillan CS5 was meant for close range but weapons like the Scout Elite really just had no place because they could try to argue that it's good at long range but it just didn't have the bullet velocity and it did 37.5 minimum damage at long range so it just wasn't viable at any range and I feel like Battlefield 1 needs to just make sure that each sniper has a defined range and a defined role where it will be useful to the player rather than just sitting there and filling up weapon slots to make it look like the game has more content. Anyway guys, I do hope you guys enjoyed this video on Battlefield 1 vs Battlefield 4 sniping. Um, again, don't forget to subscribe down below for much more content on everything Battlefield 1. Tell me the videos you'd like to see down below in the comment section. That's what it is for the video guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.